Hi guys, welcome back aboard good old Athena. We're about to raise anchor and sail 40 miles south to hopefully get our gen set fixed and hopefully meet up with another YouTube channel. We're heading to Grenada. We arrived here in Kirikou yesterday to clear customs and immigration into Grenada, so we wouldn't have to deal with that today. But uh, let's head down below and I'll show you exactly where we are and where we're going. My name is Mess, this is my wife Ava. I've spent the last five years on a somewhat extensive refit of our 1987 Warrior 38 named Athena. That was a DIY fun-packed adventure complete with a very extensive osmosis treatment, building a new rudder using vacuum infusion, rebuilding the entire deck, gutting and subsequently rebuilding most of the interior, painting the top sides and a ton of other projects. The summer of 2021, we started cruising full time. Now we're finally ready to begin our adventure. Down here we have South America, up here is the Caribbean. We are right here. Zoomed in a little bit further, up here is Caricao and down here is Grenada. It's roughly 40 miles from where we are to where we're going. Zoomed way into our current location, we're here in Tyrol Bay because this is where you clear customs and immigration. In terms of our destination in Grenada, we're not entirely sure what we want to do. We would like to be somewhere close to Prickly Bay, but uh, as you can see, all of these bays down here are exposed to the south. So if there's any kind of southerly swell, which is not that uncommon, it gets kind of rolly in there, I would imagine. That is something we can figure out when we get there. But uh, let's take a quick look at the weather. In terms of wind, both sustained and gusting, we're looking pretty good. And in terms of sea state, we're also looking good. It's nothing too serious. But unfortunately, there are some thunderstorms approaching. And uh, I don't know if we're going to get hit by any of them. See, we're going to be from here to here, and so there are some in like the general area, but the thing is, it gets much worse in the next couple of days, so I think it's a good idea to leave today. With the engine on, I walked forward to guide Ava towards the anchor with my raised arm. Bringing the boat towards the anchor using the engine makes life a lot easier on the windlass. With the anchor well clear of the bottom, I signaled to Ava that she was free to start bringing us out of the anchorage. On our way out, we pass by our friends aboard Tailey, waving goodbye, but we'll see them again in a few days. Outside of the anchorage, I used our Selden E40i electric winch to unfurl our mainsail. And then I gave Ava the opportunity for a free workout using one of the manual winches to unfurl our Genoa. This is not exactly made easier by the fact that the spray hood is preventing a full rotation of the winch handle. That's something we hope to fix in the future. We're going to cheat a little bit and motor sail until we've cleared the wind shadow of the island just to see what the wind does. We also haven't put up full sails. As you can see, our main is reef just a tiny bit because if it is gusting 20 out there, well, we need that tiny reef to make sure that the boat is balanced. While we are cheating and motor sailing, it's the perfect time for us to charge our electric outboard that's underneath the nav station here and also to make sure we run the water maker. With the water maker running and the battery for the outboard charging, we are still charging the batteries with 1500 watts or 60 one amps at 24 volts. After about an hour's worth of making water and charging the batteries, the engine is off and we're under sail. Now the 15 to 17 knots of wind never really materialized. We're seeing 10 to 11, maybe 12 knots, which is a little bit on the low side for Athena. So we're not exactly a rocket here, but we are maintaining just around five knots. We are just about to pass Kickham Jenny Volcano. Yep. Uh, on the charts, there's a little circle for a restricted area because it is actually one of the only active submerged volcanoes here in the Western Caribbean. Yep, and also our first ever submerged volcanoes. Of course, we're steering well clear of the little forbidden nougaty center of all of this madness. Yeah, but it's also very exciting because from the bottom to the peak, it is 1,300 meters tall and about 300 meters wide. So. We're definitely steering clear, but it's cool because it's really important for scientists because they get to study it and figure out how volcanoes erupt and emerge into landforms. While we might be sailing right across a pit of doomish lava right now, there's luckily no sign of lightning knock on wood. 
I'm sure somebody is going to ask if we've done anything to try and prevent lightning strike or damage from lightning strikes. But the short answer is we have done absolutely nothing with good reason, I think. I have seen various products or systems to try and avoid lightning strikes or damage from them. But as of yet, I have never seen any decent quality research that actually goes into it to prove that it works. To me, to be honest, it all seems a little bit like a snake oil. In the spirit of always being willing to learn, of course, if you have a link or some other documentation to some research that actually shows that one of these doohickeys work, well, please go ahead and leave a comment down below. we ended up grabbing a mooring ball here in Prigley Bay because it is a little bit crowded here. There's a lot of boats in not that much space. And while we're not new to anchoring anymore, we are kind of new to anchoring in very cramped conditions. We went ashore real quick yesterday afternoon when we got here and well, I'm kind of bummed out that we're not hauling out here in Prickly Bay because this place is giving me really good vibes, uh, both as a place to like hang out, but also especially for a place for hauling out the yard that's here and the chandlery or boat store looks really nice. There are two reasons why we've come here to Prickly Bay. One is to get a quote for a stainless steel swim plant platform for the transom and then also we're going to be meeting up with another YouTube channel Art Life Crafting. Now while I was doing the refit of Athena they were doing a refit of their steel boat and uh, that was also a somewhat extensive refit. Now we've both been watching each other's videos over the years and they seem like really nice people so both Ava and I are very excited to meet them in real life. Ah! I think we might just stay put here on the boat for just a few minutes until this rain has passed. But uh, if you guys noticed uh, before, there was a dinghy with a diver behind me. And that's because every Friday they dive on all the moorings here and check them. So yeah, I feel very secure at this mooring. As we zoomed away in our dinghy, I got a text from Zach and Becca confirming that they were going to be arriving in Prickly Bay a little bit later that day. A big part of what makes cruising fun is the social aspect. With both them and Duca and Roberta from Art Life Crafting in the same spot, I knew we were in for a fun time. Duca and Roberta spent a few years refitting their 44-foot steel boat in Brazil before heading to the Caribbean. But, as is the way with boats, just because you arrive somewhere warm and relaxing doesn't mean it's actually time to relax. There are always tons of boat projects. In this instance, some new DIY custom-made fiberglass parts for the exhaust. It's been a minute since I've felt the oh glorious itch of sanding fiberglass, so of course I jumped at the chance to help Duca with his project. After everything was sanded, we proceeded to lay up yet more fiberglass to strengthen the exhaust parts and to get their ends to their final outer diameter to be able to get a nice tight seal on the hoses. After a few days of repeating this process, it was time for yet more sanding and then finally a couple of coats of paint. But fear not, there was also time for some non-itchy activities like polishing the hull. With Duca, Sack and myself, it was a fun and really nice afternoon. After a couple of last minute adjustments to the outer diameter, it was time to fit the exhaust. As you can see, there are some pretty sharp turns, hence the need for these custom made parts. But eventually it was time to cross our fingers and start the engine. It has been an absolute ton of fun hanging out with Duca, Roberta and Zach and Becca over these last few days. Now, if you want to see how the exhaust turned out and also see the other projects that Art Life Crafting is tackling while being up on the hard, I'll include a link for their channel down in the description. On a quick little unrelated side note, we had a very unfortunate incident a couple of days ago when we were heading to shore to lend a hand and uh, forgot to close one of the hatches. So. Uh, 
yeah, all of our GoPros and uh, one of our mic sets, the only one where we actually have a working double lavalier wireless set, uh, they're currently buried in rice. It rained a lot that day and as a result a lot of water came in through the hatch soaking all of these electronics. Now I don't really believe that the rice are doing much good really for this because if they are soaked, the water is going to be in there for a long time until the rice can actually extract the moisture. But yeah, it's worth a try. I mentioned that the budget marine here in Prickly Bay is very well stocked. In fact, it is the nicest chandlery or boat store we've come across since leaving Europe, which is very fortunate because over the last six months, we've had a bit of an annoying issue with our barbecue. We use our Magma Newport barbecue a lot. I can't say that it's every day, that would be an exaggeration, but it is very close to that. Oh, and uh, don't mind the fenders. I'm just trying to make the extended solar panels a little bit more visible for boats passing by. Like I mentioned this thing sees a lot of action so it's not exactly squeaky clean on the inside so please bear with me. Now the issue we're seeing is that the first section of the grill here is nice and toasty, the next section is kind of at a medium and then the last section is just plain cold. While cleaning the barbecue I've had it completely apart many times and I've inspected the little burner tube in there, tried cleaning that hasn't really helped so I figured it was time to try a new burner tube. They had this replacement burner at Budget Marine which is awesome. The only downside is it was 127 EC or East Caribbean dollars which translates into 47 US dollars. This part in the US is 28 dollars so if you come here maybe bring an extra one of these. This assembly is super easy everything just kind of lifts out that's also nice for cleaning with the control valve removed there's a little pin here securing the burner and with that pulled the burner simply just lifts out like i said i've had this thing out multiple times cleaned it inspected it can't really see anything wrong with it but let's cross our fingers for the new one that looks super new and shiny in there I should probably just clean the rest of the grill real quick. With the grill fully reassembled and cleaned, although it's not cleaned to the highest of grill cleaning standards, that's known as the Mark Jones standard, it seems to be performing a lot better. The heat feels a lot more uniform and before putting the grill on top I checked the flame and it looks much more even. So I think yeah all we needed was just a new burner. Speaking of cleaning things we have got a very unsightly rust stain over here on the port side of Athena's hull. This thing has been annoying me for a couple of months now. I think we got it when we were crossing the Atlantic. While we were in Budget Marine with Duca and Roberta she recommended this rust stain remover and I figured somebody with a steel boat they must know a little something about removing rust stains. Supposedly you just spray it on, leave it sit for a couple of minutes and rinse with fresh water. Wow that stuff is pretty freaking awesome. I can actually see the rust disappearing from the hull. This is about two minutes later, one application, no scrubbing and ta-da! All the rust is gone. This stuff is pretty freaking awesome. You guys saw how effective it was. So a good job to start right. And uh, considering the tiny amount I used, I think there's enough for the rest of my lifetime in this spray bottle. When it comes to polishing stainless, I have yet to find anything that beats good old Autosol metal polish. You might have noticed that the stainless also was looking a little bit dull. Let's fix that. After just a tiny dab and a little bit of polishing, ta-da! This looks much shinier. It can be a lot of work to keep a boat up so that it looks nice and spiffy and finding products like the stain remover and autosol is just a giant help because it makes that maintenance just a little bit easier. Before ending this video, I want to give you guys a quick little update on our Fisher Panda genset. It's been acting up for a while and I've reached out to Fisher Panda's technical support and the current best working theory is that it's this guy that's the culprit. This little actuator or stepper motor is what controls the speed of the engine and that could very well explain the low RPMs we're seeing because I don't believe it is a fuel issue. I've already replaced both of the filters and we have no other fuel issues with the main engine so yeah, I think this guy might be the culprit. The good news is that that little rascal is super easy to replace. 
provided, of course, we can find one here on Grenada. Now, in terms of cost, I have no idea what that little part would cost. I'm sure it's like two bucks in China, but uh, the genset should still be under warranty, so I'm hoping the actuator is covered by that. We've contacted the one and only Fisher Panda dealer here in Grenada, and we've filled out the paperwork for them to come to the boat and take a look, and then hopefully they'll agree and hopefully they'll have an actuator in stock here on the island so we can get the genset up and running again. Fingers crossed. Speaking of things that should hopefully happen next week, we're also expecting to get a quote from Spice Island Marine, that's the yard here in Prickly Bay, for a swim platform for Athena. Now, if that quote looks reasonable, then I think we might very well haul out here at the Spice Island Marine and get a little bit of a head start on the hurricane projects we were gonna be doing in Aruba. I think most of the projects we were planning on doing there, we should be able to do here. Like for instance, raising the water line a little bit to compensate for some extra weight aboard the boat. And maybe also uh, some shade material for the cockpit maybe put like a little tent over the hatches so we don't get any more rain in in case we forget to close them, stuff like that. That we should all be able to do here. I haven't figured out yet if we can make new bushings for the steering yet, but uh, I'll uh, check up on that. Also next week, we hope to rent a car with Zach and Becca from Taylor to see a bit of the island and do a big grocery run. Yeah, maybe we'll see some waterfalls. Yeah, that would be awesome. Okay. So uh, yeah, we hope to see all of you guys back here aboard Athena next week for yet more cruising fun. Mm -hmm. As always, feel free to leave a comment down below and don't forget, if you've enjoyed this video, please remember to leave a like. See, see you. you.